Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord, and we just bless and honor you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord, coming down even over our life, Father, even as we gather. Father, even today, Father, we just begin to pray that your mercy, Lord, will be activated even over your people, Lord, and you'll begin to raise up leaders, Father, that will begin to release them, even your mercy in the earth, Father, and you'll cause for even men to draw closer unto you, Father. I just begin to pray now, Father, let grace and mercy Father, be released even today, Father, even as your power, Father, come down even over your house, Lord. You'll activate rivers, Lord, that will begin to release them. Even your mercy, God, and you'll raise up prayer leaders, Father, that know how to activate them. Even your mercy in the society, in throughout society. And Father, I just begin to pray, Father, let grace and glory and even power come down even over your people, even today. And Lord, I say your cause to even break through the manifest. Lord, you'll deliver your people you are set them free even this day in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah uh, this message is mercy the power of intercession and I want to speak on the mandate that's upon this house in the area of intercession and how God have raised us up to release mercy within cities within our family within the nations within communities and I believe that God is beginning to activate people that will begin to release glory in the earth like never before and there comes even this mantle of intercession that's going to be stirred even over the believers and when we begin to pray people will be delivered as we begin to pray people will be set free as we begin to pray demons shall be destroyed but God is going to release mercy through a people that will begin to capture their hearts and draw them closer unto God so I want to begin to push this mandate of intercession and God is raising up leaders that know how to pray God is raising up leaders that know how to stand in the porch stand between the porch of people and help them be delivered from things Things, uh, that is trying to destroy them help them be delivered from things uh, that is trying to uh, criticize them and keep them in bondage uh, but I believe today as God activate intercessors that there come the mandate uh, where mercy will be released so let's look at Genesis chapter 18 verses 17. Genesis chapter 18, verses 17. It says, And the Lord said, Shall I have from Abraham that thing which I do? Verses, nine, verses 19 says, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of. And so Abraham had a relationship with God. And so we see that this was a, a, a relationship that God cultivated. And so mercy and not just mercy, but a deliverance can begin to hit the uh, community that he lived in. And so as intercessors, we are individuals that seek God's will and his way. And so when you look at this, the Bible says that God began to say in Genesis 18 verse Verses 19, for I know him, which speaks of a relationship that Abraham cultivated uh, with God. In this season, it's going to be prevalent. Uh, we, we must rise to a place um, where we cultivate a relationship with God. This is one of the key things that's going to be uh, prevalent in today, that our relationship with God must be cultivated. God said, I know him. I want to ask the question, do God know you? Do God know you? Do you know God's thoughts? Do you know his will? Will. Do you know his mind? Do you know his intent? Do you know what's on his heart? And so Abraham was a person that knew God. And then it says that he will command his children and his household after him. So Abraham aligned himself and his family with God's righteousness and with God's thoughts. In order for us to release mercy within the city and within our families and with our communities, we must align our hearts and our intents with God's righteousness and with God's thoughts intercessors who align themselves with God's righteousness uh, and, and that who pray earnestly will help their families break through in this area of mercy let's look at Genesis chapter 18 verses 23 to, uh, through 26 
It says that Abraham drew near uh, unto God and said, Will thou also destroy the righteousness or the righteous with the wicked? A preadventure that there be 50 righteous within the city, when thou art destroyed, not to spare the place with the 50 righteous that are therein. Verse 25 there, uh, that there be also that after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous, that the righteous should be the wicked also. Uh, that thou bow for thee shall not judge all the earth do right. Verse 26, and the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous men within the city, then I will spare. I will spare the place for their sake. So we see that Abraham, as a prayer leader, sought God continually for grace to fall upon the city. And as a body, uh, as, as intercessors, we're going to have to rise to begin to seek God, that he will begin to release grace over our city. He gonna, he, we want him to release grace over our families, over our communities, uh, over the nations. It is not for God. Uh, it is not the will of God that man shall perish, but they shall have everlasting life. Uh, and so when you study the life of Abraham, Abraham, again, he knew God and he was in the face of God. He stood in the face of God, pleading and asking that God will begin to save our city. If you understand what is happening in society today, uh, society needs salvation and they need answers they need deliverance they need breakthrough and I believe it's these type of Abraham leaders that's gonna rise up huh, that will stand in the face of God to see God for mercy to see God for deliverance to see God for breakthrough for our community I know things are wicked I know things are chaotic I know things are, are beginning to be turned over there are certain things that is happening within our nations happening within our city but as a result God has always had a people that will pray God has always had a people that will cry out. God has always had a people that will begin to release his voice in the earth that mercy will be activated. And so Abraham as a prayer leader continually sought God. And I'm telling you there are leaders that's going to rise up. They're not backing back. Huh? But they're going to stay in the face of God until mercy is released. Huh? They're not going to back up because of what they see. But they're going to stay in the face of God until deliverance manifests. Huh? I believe there are people that's going to rise up in places of prayer. Huh? Just like their families and they're not going to stop until they see their family delivered. They're not going to stop until they see their family come to the place huh, where they may know God in spirit and in truth. Huh? And I'm telling you, it's these Abraham type of people. Why? Because they know God. They understand his righteousness. They understand his thoughts. They understand his will. They understand the kingdom of God. They're not concerned about material things. Uh, they're not concerned about money. They're not concerned uh, about giftings and talents, but they're concerned about the thoughts and the will of God. Uh, they understand the purpose that God's purpose is right. Uh, God's purpose is true. They understand God, God's kingdom must be released in the earth. And it's these Abraham type of people that looks at a community. Abraham looked at a community and he saw the good within the community and I'm telling you we got to rise like these Abraham types of people and say listen God if there are 50 people in our city can you save our city if there are 50 people within our family can you see and can you save our families they look past uh, what is happening they look past the dysfunction uh, they look past the chaos and they see the good within the nation and I'm telling you that must be a people that rises up no matter what type of crime it's happening you got to see the good within your community you got to see the good within your family you got to see the good uh, within your city you got to see the good within your church uh, you got to see the good within your nations you got to see the good uh, within your industry and you'll be these type of Abraham people that rise and begin to pray that God will begin to save our city God will begin to save our communities uh, God will begin to save our families and so intercessors seek guys for their families in their communities in their cities in their states in their nation they remind God of prophetic promises and visions so deliverance and breakthrough can manifest Abraham was a type of people was a type of leader that kept reminding God of prophetic promises that kept reminding God of prophetic visions why because God told Abraham that out of your loins the nations will be great and so that deals with anything that he was 
was able to touch. And I'm telling you, there got to be a people that know how to remind God of his prophetic promises uh, so mercy can drop over our city. It is good in our city. It is brilliancy in our city. It is wonderful in our city. No matter what is happening, no matter what it looks like, our city still can be saved. Our city can be delivered. Our families can be saved. Our families can be delivered. And we got to look past the dysfunction. We got to get delivered from the things that is causing even our eye gate to be corrupted. That we can see God's righteousness within the city. That we can see God's righteousness within the community. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 19 verses 1. It says, And there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Now this is so powerful because again, in Genesis chapter 18, Abraham began to plead with God. He began to pray and seek God's face. And one thing that happened, that was angels. That's what was released. One one of the things intercession does, it releases angels huh, to help bring deliverance to people who've been bound by corruption. It releases angels huh, to help people be delivered from things huh, of iniquity and bondages and perversion and lust. Huh. I believe it was the prayers of Abraham that activated these angels huh, to bypass the corruption, to bypass the perversion, to bypass the lust and save a generation. Huh. And I'm telling you, we got to rise as a people that know how to pray and release the angels of the Lord uh, that can set captives free, uh, that can deliver families, uh, that can deliver generations. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm a, a, a candidate of that. Uh, I began to pray with my mother in 2018 uh, for a whole year. Uh, and I believe, I'm telling you something began to break off of my mother. She began to pray after 30 years being kept away from the church. Uh, and that was a mandate that was restored on her life uh, because of the power of prayer. Uh, and I'm telling you there's a people that is arising huh, and they're not going to back down because of what is happening huh, but they're going to see the prophetic promise huh, that was released over their families huh, they're going to see the prophetic promises huh, that was released over their cities huh, they're going to see the prophetic promises huh, that was released over their nations huh, and as a result they're going to rise in that place of prayer huh, and remind God that you said this huh, and this is what's got to happen huh. they're not going to look at the corruption huh, they're not going to look at the lust they're not going to look at the perversion but in the place of prayer angels huh, will be released to release mercy over our city Hallelujah. Genesis 19, it says, And an angel came to Sodom at evening, and Lot uh, uh, is sat at the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and bowed himself with his face. Verse 19 says, Behold now, thy servant have found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me, and saved my life. Uh, uh, Lot was able to experience the saving power of God because Abraham prayed and I'm telling you there's about to be a people that will experience the saving power of God because you prayed because you prophesied because you stood in that place of intercession and you begin to open up your mouth and you begin to decree what the spirit of the Lord was saying and as a result it's going to release supernatural breakthrough as a result it's going to release supernatural increase as a result it's going to release supernatural deliverance to save our family Lot was Abraham's nephew and he was about to be destroyed with the community but he stood in that place of prayer and as a result Lot was able to understand the mercy of God I'm telling you that there is a people that is rising and what looked like it is evil in the city of Chicago God is going to raise up leaders that know how to pray that know how to stand in that position and begin to open up their mouth and as a result mercy is going to be released Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for mercy. Uh, Psalm chapter 30 verses 10 it begins to go to this uh, uh, Genesis 19 verses 19 let me read this uh, it says God's mercy uh, when we look at this God's mercy is kindled it was kindled and it released angels to deliver light now this is powerful because light in his own script would not been able to be delivered from this perversion and so we understand when people begin to pray and it releases mercy it helps people get delivered from things uh, that they in their own script they can't get delivered 
delivered from. In their own strength, they can't be healed from. In their own strength, they can't break free from. But it was the mercy of God. So mercy go beyond your dysfunction. It goes beyond what you are battling. It goes beyond what you are stuck in. It brings you to a place of deliverance. It brings you to a place of breakthrough. It brings you to a place of healing. And I'm telling you, there's a people that's rising in the place of intercession. And they don't care what you are in. They don't care what you are suffering with. They don't care what you are going through. But they understand that when they begin to pray, it activates mercy over a generation. And God began to deliver them. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, Psalm chapter 30 verses uh, 10. Now this is the same word grace and mercy. I'm from this Hebrew word shine or shanin. Uh, Psalms 30 verses 10 through 11 it says here. Oh Lord and have mercy upon me. Lord be thou my helper. Verses 11. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Now mercy here. It activate God as our helper. And when people who know how to pray and when they know how to intercede and when they know how to war in the spirit it releases God's mercy as a helper unto generations to deliver them out of distress. To deliver them out of bondage to deliver them where they was bound I'm telling you it's the mercy of God that's about to hit our nation it's the mercy of God that's about to hit our generation it's the mercy of God that's about to hit our families and as a result God is going to be our helper as a result God is going to turn our mourning into dancing as a result we're going to break out of that distress and he's going to put gladness on our life somebody shout mercy Hallelujah. Genesis, uh, Psalm chapter 23, verses 6. It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Mercy helps the believers stay in the house of God. It helps them stay planted. It helps them stay grounded and rooted in the house of God. I believe that while we have so many people being uprooted out of the house of God because we have a house that don't know how to release the mercy of God. But David, the writer, began to say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm telling you, there's a mercy that is coming over people that will cause them to stay stable in the assignment that God has given them. They will stay planted in the house of the Lord so they can flourish. I believe the reason why people is not flourishing it's a direct contact that they've lost the mercy of God. But when intercessors begin to rise and begin to pray and activate the mercy of God so people can stay planted in the house of the Lord. Psalms 21 verses 7. It says, for the king trusted in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High shall uh, he shall not be moved. So we see mercy here. Uh, when you think about a king, it deals with his assignment or his role or his position. And so mercy helps leaders stay aligned with the assignment that God has given them. I believe that people are losing their assignment or they are forfeiting their assignment all because they do not uh, have mercy or they have not experienced uh, the the mercy of God but the writer says for the king trusted in the Lord and through the mercy of the most high he shall not be moved I'm telling you there's been people uprooted out of their assignment there's been people forfeiting their calling and their assignment and their mandate but when intercessors arise and begin to pray it releases mercy so they can stay focused to the assignment that God have given them Jesus begin to say my meat is to do the will of him uh, that have sent me. I believe uh, that there is coming the mercy of God upon people. What prophets want to give up. Uh, it's the mercy of God that will cause them to stay. Uh, and when apostles uh, and pastors want to give up, uh, it's the mercy of God that will ground them uh, in that assignment and cause them to flourish. Uh, in that mandate I declare, uh, let the mercy of God be released uh, upon prophets that want to throw in the tower. Let the mercy of God be released Upon the 
apostles and senior leaders uh, that want to throw in the towel, Father, we begin to release the mercy of God uh, upon millennials uh, that want to throw in their assignment. Uh, Father, we say let mercy be released. Oh, hallelujah. Vekele ma shetela man uh, Mark chapter 10 verses 46 uh, and so then we begin to look at Jesus how he uh, began to activate the mercy of God over this man a uh, uh, blind Bartimaeus as some of us call him and, and Mark chapter 10 verses 46 uh, it says and they came to Jericho and as he went out to Jericho with his disciples a great no, uh, number of people a uh, blind Bartimaeus the son of Timaeus uh, sat by the wayside bank now this is so powerful here Bartimaeus was blind which means he had no vision he had no clear instructions he had no direction uh, the Bible says according to Proverbs I believe it's 29 verses 11 where there is no vision of people perish and so you can just imagine a blind Bartimaeus here with no vision uh, no assignment no direction and he is begging to think about uh, 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 Christianity we should never beg uh, for things that rightfully belong to us huh? and so when we don't have a vision huh? when we don't have no clear direction on where we are going in life huh? and what we need to be and where God is trying to send us huh? it will cause for us to beg for things huh? that rightfully belong to us huh? and so we see this man here huh? with no insight with no clear direction huh? with no insight concerning huh? who he is and what God has called him to be huh? and as a result he is left begging uh, for something that was rightfully belonged that rightfully belonged to him uh, in verse 46 it says and when he came uh, it says he came when Jesus came to uh, Jericho uh, a great number of people blind Bartimaeus was sitting here by the highway it is, deals with a realm of transition most people who are blind uh, uh, begin to lose their sight in transition but when we get to verse 47 it says and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to cry out and say Jesus the son of David have mercy on me and many charged him that he should hold his peace but he cried the more we see this consistency in his persistence he began to cry out for more he began to cry out with a great deal the son of David have mercy on me the man cries out to God continuously because he heard Jesus huh, was in the midst I prophesy huh, that this is a year that Christ huh, as Christ is being revealed huh, that you will receive revelation the Bible says that blind Bartimaeus huh, began to hear that Jesus was coming. Huh? And I'm telling you the scary thing huh, is that when God began to release a movement in the earth, huh, you have people that cannot receive uh, revelation because of the lack of vision. You have a people that don't understand what God is trying to do. Huh? And so we see that this man huh, is sitting here by a transitional moment and he don't have vision. Huh? He don't have direction. Huh? But that was something on the inside of him uh, that wanted more of God uh, and be, he began to perceive that Jesus uh, was coming I prophesy uh, that this is a day that as a movement uh, begin to manifest throughout our cities uh, throughout our region that we're going to have revelation of who God is uh, and we're going to know the mercy of God we're going to know the mercy of God he said that he, he the Bible said he was persistent and he was consistent in calling Christ. And when people are persistent in seeking God, it activates God's mercy. As a result, God began to heal this man. As a result, God began to deliver him. As a result, his vision was restored. So we see mercy right here restores vision. Mercy restores vision again. Jesus uh, is the Savior. He was come to liberate us from bondage. Uh, he was sent to liberate us from the dysfunction that was resisting, uh, that was restricting us uh, from being able to see what God wanted to do. And this man was blind. He had no direction. He had no insight. He had no vision. And as a result, he could not see what God wanted uh, for his life. But God began to restore his vision. Mercy 
mercy restores vision. And it's these intercessors uh, that's going to rise up and pray that God release mercy. It is sad when we see v- generations uh, that don't have a vision. I begin to ask uh, uh, people throughout my uh, 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 the job that I used to work for uh, this week, uh, uh, young people, how many of them had vision? What's their vision for their life? And they didn't have a vision. And so we have a generation that have moved into 2021 that don't have a vision. They don't have no direction. They are, they are lost. They're scattered. They are hopeless. They are defeated. Uh, uh, they, they are perishing again. Uh, uh, Proverbs says, where there is no vision, the people uh, begin to perish. Uh, and so when we look at this, look at verse 48. It says that uh, the many charged him that he should hold his peace. This deals with religion and tradition. Well, when you don't have a vision and when you're seeking the Savior to help deliver you from the thing that was having you bound, you have religious people that want to keep you in bondage. But the mercy of God will deliver you from religion. It will deliver you from tradition and those things that want to hold you back from having a vision. And I decree that this is a year huh? that God's mercy will restore our vision that God's mercy will restore our assignment huh? that God's mercy will restore huh? the ability to break through Jericho was a, a promoting city it was a developmental city huh? that people went to Jericho for transaction they went to Jericho to begin to move back and forth huh? and finances huh? and as a result this dude was blind huh? he didn't have no vision with me huh? he was not able to attract the resources uh, that he needed to break through uh, because when you don't have vision you don't have the resources uh, or you cannot attract the resources uh, that is necessary to break through uh, and so you have these religious people trying to shut him down when mercy is warranted uh, and as a result he broke out of those situations uh, he broke free from the bondage uh, he broke free from people's opinion uh, he broke free from the religion uh, and he began to receive the mercy of Christ uh, and as a result his vision was restored as a result uh, he began to rise and move forward verse 49 says and Jesus stood still Jesus stood still this is powerful which means the, the cry in the desperation got Jesus attention the cry in the desperation begin to uh, uh, grasp Jesus' attention. And I believe we're moving in a season where our desperation for more of God is going to begin to grasp God's attention. It says Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying unto him, be a good comfort. Jesus uh, activates comfort. I'm telling you, it's the mercy of God will begin to activate comfort over people that don't have a vision. People that don't have direction people that don't know where they're going God's comfort is released over people when mercy is activated it says saying of him be of comfort rise he called it the, he began to command this man to rise he came out of the low place mercy calls for people to come out of their low places it causes them to break out of the out of poverty it causes them to break out of their comfort zone it causes them to pivot and launch forward and I'm telling you in a new season what well, God's mercy is going to cause us to move forward God's mercy is going to cause us to come out of that low place what well, we've been stuck in years after years gets the mercy of God uh, that will break the bondages uh, and cause us to rise and push forward verse 50 it says that he casting away his garments now this is powerful garments in uh, history in biblical times represented something and so when people who were blind they wore a type of garment so people could know it so you can just see that as this man break out of his garments he was breaking out of what was familiar he was breaking out of people's opinion and how people thought that he should live the garment when people saw this man they knew 
knew that he was dysfunctional. They knew that he was blind. They knew that he was helpless. They knew that he didn't have nothing. But this man began to break out of those things that people identify him with. And I'm telling you, it's going to be the mercy of God that will break people out of the opinions of religion. That will break people out of the opinions of tradition. That will separate us from familiarity and what people thought we should live like and how people thought we should act like. I can see this man breaking out of that garment and beginning to receive vision for his life. I'm telling you the mercy of God is coming over people that did not have vision, that did not know how to move, that didn't have direction. Father, we begin to pray. Let the mercy of God be released over a generation that don't have vision, that don't have grace, that don't have momentum. Father, we say let the grace of God be released just as you found even blind Bartimaeus Lord with no vision and he was hopeless. He had no direction. Father, we begin to pray now in the name of Jesus. Let the script of your mercy be released over our communities and begin to arrest people. Father, that don't have vision. We begin to prophesy now that these are the days that you will begin to release even your script God and you will raise up intercessors Father that will begin even to release the mercy of God Father we prophesy it now in the name of Jesus let the mercy of God be released Father to find those that are hopeless to find those that are lost to find those that are bound to find those that don't have power to break free Father today let your mercy be released in the name of Jesus oh Shekinah Father we begin to pray let mercy arise in the midst of us and Father you'll begin to find those that have felt lost you'll begin to find those that don't have grace you'll begin to find those Father that is hopeless in the name of Jesus we cry out mercy just as blind Bartimaeus begin to say God have mercy on us Father we stand as intercessors and we begin to say have mercy over our cities have mercy over our nations have mercy over our families have mercy over our people Lord this day in the name of Jesus let the mercy of God be released oh hallelujah let the mercy be released Father let mercy be released We prophesy mercy is coming Let the mercy of God be released Father we say let mercy find those That are bound by bondage Let mercy find those That are bound by addictions Let mercy find those That are stuck in poverty Let mercy find those That don't have vision That don't have direction Father we say let mercy Come upon the blows that's bound by lust bound by perversion Father we prophesy it in the name of Jesus On behalf of Apostle Stephen Garner and Prophet Yolanda Garner, we want to thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. Share, click like, and subscribe. Tell all your friends and all your followers uh, that this is the month that we'll be releasing the mercy of God as we continue the teachings. Amen. You be blessed, and may God continue to release his mercy over your life. Amen. <laughs>